Hello, you wondered where that black spot was. That 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 was just me being slow on the uptake. Uh, I have to apologize. Terry Harden here. Uh, Terry TV. Welcome to Terry TV. Yes, uh, I had a couple of little glitches this morning, along with uh, being a little bit more on my Patreon page. So uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. So great to see you. Thought I'd talk about a few subjects today. Uh, for one thing, uh, I will assure you, if you're new to this channel and you're just joining us, and right now you're just joining us, but if you're just joining us, um, I don't talk politics, okay? Politics and religion, I stay away from here. Um, I do uh, say my opinions about Disney, and I do eat my breakfast. Watching me chew is probably not your favorite thing in the world, but pretend we're sitting opposite each other at dinner. How are you today? Anyway, sorry about my tardiness today. How was your Easter? We're going to talk about a few subjects today because I feel very passionate about them. This is what this channel is about, Terry TV. I'm going to talk about all kinds of subjects in many different ways, but not religion or politics, except for the fact that if you had a good Easter, feel free to tell me in the comments, or you you enjoyed Passover, or however you celebrate, uh, feel free to share it with me because I love learning something new. But boy, that's the extent of it. Um, as an artist, and I do all kinds of art, paint, sculpt, draw, perform, um, I love the outdoors, especially the beach. Uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. Doesn't it sound like I'm interviewing for a date? Nope. Have the love of my life. We're almost 20 years married. And uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have me, him, and a really gorgeous little dog. So, uh, so yeah, I'm a dog person. I also love cats, though. I just am a dog person. So uh, it doesn't mean I dislike cats. I love cats. And I love the people who love cats. I love to hear and learn about their cat antics. Uh, but in any case, uh, welcome to Terry TV. And today we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about Ted Lasso. And then the last thing I showed you was uh, a little bit of the Red Dot auction. And some of you had some questions about the Red Dot auction. That's the Chuck Dones Society uh, for Creativity. It is a uh, group of, it is a place where you can go and you can send your children to learn about animation, illustration, doing things in a clever, fun, creative way. And every year they have the Red Dot Auction, so we'll talk about that. And then what the heck is a cachet? Lady, lady, we're confused. So um, I'll try to help you with that as well, okay? Um, I probably should have pulled one out, but you'll just watch me pull one out. It's nothing up my sleeve, presto! Uh, but anyway, so, uh, so that's the deal. And, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's really fun. So let's kick it off by talking about Ted Lasso. I also want you all to feel that this is not necessarily always Disney centric. I am a Disney Imagineer known as the come here, come here, get away, get away Imagineer. They take me out of the box when they need me and they put me back in a little box about this big, uh, when they don't need me. And that works really well. It's kind of like the tide. I come in, do some work, go out, and enjoy my life. And uh, it works for me. But the point here is that uh, some people have reached out and said they don't want to speak on certain things because they think it's all about Disney. It's not, guys, okay? I do love the mouse. And there are times I want to scold the mouse. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's a new live action thing they've announced. Uh, because I've not been real fan of the live actions. Um, I pray every time that they'll get a good one and do a good one and do another good one and do another good one. But I don't know if they're going to do that because lately they've been, in my opinion, quite terrible and uh, breaks my heart because they don't need to be if they were more creative, like uh, the Cinderella one, which is my favorite one to date. And that was the first one they did. And I was scared to see that one. But when I saw it, I loved it so much. I said, ooh, maybe they're onto something. And then they did some of the others like Maleficent and broke my heart. So uh, 
So I'm just saying, you know, I would love Disney to take a pause. Don't just throw spaghetti at the wall. Take a minute and, and analyze the pasta and make sure it's a good quality. And we would all love it. The other thing I'd point out about Disney is that maybe they feel like there's so many of you out there and there are a lot of Disney fans out there that will at least see it once. So who cares if it's bad? I certainly hope that's not the attitude because uh, it would be nice to be accountable, study and make something really cool because that's what you're about. Disney is creativity as well as Jim Henson Company. Creativity. Don't just copy and paste. Um, create, you know, be creative. That's what your predecessors did. And that's what we love about, that's what makes you so special. Anyone who does, who studies and does something creative um, makes it special. And we love seeing that. So fingers crossed, this is what you'll be doing. Uh, but I decided to talk about Ted Lasso. I'm obsessed with Ted Lasso. I saw it at a, I saw it as screeners before it aired um, or maybe just after it aired on, on Apple plus. But uh, in any case, I just flipped over this as many of you did. And if you have not yet seen Tesla Ted Lasso and you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Apple TV. Go to Apple TV, Apple Plus TV, I believe, and uh, and check it out. But I do caution you. Bum, bum, I want to caution you about episode three. So watch episode, I mean, uh, season three, watch season one, season two, but you may want to wait until entire season three drops. I, we had this very uh, fun, uh, exciting conversation with the Patreon page. And before I get too far, if you're just joining us and you're like, you keep mentioning the Patreon page, what is the Patreon page? Well, let me tell you. Patreon.com slash Terry Harden is a page that for $5 a month you can get to more intimately discuss with a community of like-minded people, all things, and it's behind a closed door. We have a private Facebook page so we can really kind of open up about how we feel and not be judged or dissed for it. So uh, originally I created this page thinking that people might want advice on how to make a living doing what lo they love or how to maybe get a job for Disney or something like that in my pop culture history, because I have done a lot. I've done Ghostbusters, Men in Black, Google me. And that's the best way to see everything that I've done since I was probably knee high to a grasshopper in the film industry and in the industry of performing arts and art. But that's when I first created the page, I thought this is what many of you might like. And to my surprise and delight, you had just as much to share with me as I had with you. So this becomes a community of people helping people, upbeat, happy, no politics because, and, and why no politics? Okay. You may know exactly why no politics, but no politics because you cannot change a person's mind on how they believe or who they're going to follow in the political or religious world. It's just a waste of your breath and a waste of your time. So love them for who they love and what they study. If it's not exactly to your taste, just love on them because they're a good person. All right. Ask yourself, are they a jerk? Don't deal with them. Are they a good person, a sweet person, a fun person to be around? And do they en enhance your life? By all means, just steer away from pro from those topics that could, you know, ruin a really good relationship. And so that's why I do this on this channel, because there's plenty of people that you can dive into to learn about politics. In fact, they have a lot of followers. Um, <laughs> so just be one of those if you want. But here you can rest assured that uh, uh, we're not going to do religion or politics. Now, I cannot guarantee you that we won't ruffle some feathers, but uh, that's life. You know, we can't please everyone. But we do try to let you know that your voice does need to be heard. If you're a giver, if you're someone who needs some help with something, this is the page for you. Patreon.com slash Terry Harden. $5 a month is all I ask. There are higher levels to join if you so choose. But five, once you start at $5 a month, dip a toe in for a month, see if it's for you. And if you like it, stay. If not, no harm, no foul. Okay. All right. So there we go. There we go. That's what it is. That's what it's all. That's what it's all about. So back to Ted Lasso. Uh, the reason I say stay clear of season three until it completely drops is because it is so different from the first two seasons. Um, and it is so different that watching it one at a time is painful. 
<laughs> I'm just going to say it right straight up. I'm not going to give you spoilers. I, I meant to write in my comments that I will not give any spoilers, okay? Uh, it hasn't fully dropped, and I'm not going to give you spoilers. But I, what I will tell you is it is dramatically different from the first two seasons. And uh, I want you to be able to not be – I don't want you to go through what I'm going through, which I feel like a piece of taffy. I think they're taffying me up during this final season. Um, also, I thought I could watch the first episode and then stream the rest. I cannot. They they write so well in this series. You know, these seasons are written so well, so beautifully, so brilliantly that they do something at the end that makes you must see the next episode. You cannot not do it. Those of you who can, good for you, but I cannot not do it. I I thought after watching their at episode four and, and, and this Wednesday is episode five, I believe. So at the end of episode four, I thought I might be able to wait and binge the rest. I could just leave it alone. And they put a zinger in at the end that was so, what the heck, that I have to see the next episode. And they keep doing that to me. So if you don't want to be handcuffed to the Ted Lasso season three, wait. And I promise you, I will completely deadpan. Tell you that the season is over. Go watch it now with no inflections in my voice so that I don't spoil anything for you so that you can enjoy it as much as I did or be tortured as much as I was. But you won't be because you'll be able to binge the entire show so I promise I'll do that for you. And uh, and uh, that way you cannot be cuffed to it like I am. It is torture. And we do a Zoom call on the Patreon page every Wednesday and sometimes Monday nights, but mostly Wednesday in the afternoon where we all get together and actually speak live, which is one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing, and uh, about the page. But uh, what we do is we actually get together and we talk this over and we had uh, a discussion about Ted Lasso on this subject. And I asked people who had made the mistake of watching it how they felt. And they're like, I'm so upset. Or I can't believe, you know, they just, without sharing what is causing us this challenge, uh, we we spoke about it. So we urged our, our tribe, Terry's tribe, to, if you haven't started it, don't. Do yourself a favor, wait, and we'll tell you when it's dropped and you can just take a Sunday popcorn, nice comfy chair, or, you know, raise the legs on your foldable bed and just give yourself a day of Ted Lasso and you you're going to feel better for it. Uh, also, yeah, because <sighs> really something, really, really something. It is a roller coaster. I will tell you, season three is a roller coaster for you emotionally. And you're like, what's that about? What's that about? What's that about? And uh, it just catapults you into the next episode. So if you don't want to be cuffed to it every uh, every Wednesday, just, you know, danger, danger, warning, uh, uh, something like that. OK, so that's why I wanted to reach out to Ted Lasso. As far as the Red Dot auction is concerned, uh, the Red Dot auction is the Chuck Jones uh, Center for Creativity. I said society, but it's actually Center for Creativity. Correct me now. And uh, the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity, they hold what's called a Red Dot auction, meaning that paintings are done from artists all over Southern California and in some cases from other states. And they send in the artwork. And what they do is, uh, if you want to do this, now, yesterday was the deadline. But what I know about Chuck Jones is that if you wanted to pay a painting now, you reach out to the Red Dot group and you say to them, hey, I'd like to do a painting. They will accept it because they want as many paintings as possible for people to choose from. But they send you a box like this if they have enough canvases. And you can request them to send you a canvas. Each canvas that they send out for for do for agreeing to paint. And let me just pull a few things out here. Is they send you this nice uh, twelve inch by twelve inch canvas. You can see I've not started mine yet. I'm gonna try and do that today or tomorrow, and I'm so excited because I have not been in my studio for nine months. And I'm beginning to, it's its affecting me. Um, art is part of my DNA. And if it's part of your DNA, you know what I'm talking about. You start to not be the whole lovely person that you are. And um, so, uh, 
So they send you that. They send you a night's note. They tell you when the deadline is. And today I have to write to them and say, you realize that your deadline was Easter. What were you thinking? And uh, and then tell them that uh, I'll send it when I can. And hopefully that's okay. It has to be. The reason they say the ninth is because as artists, we tend to be late on projects. But for me, that was an impossible deadline from the get-go. I asked him, you know, wow, that's tight. And it's because they want to do an online auction opportunity for people who can't make the gala. There is a gala at the end where you simply buy it now. That's what a red dot is. So if you've ever been on eBay and you buy it now, it closes out all the bidding process and it's sold to the person who pays what the asking price is. Last year, I was honored with a beautiful uh, uh, asking price of $2,500 for my painting, which is the most that someone has offered me. And I just started painting in 2020. I did do uh, some things for the Red Dot Society that were not paintings. And then I finally did a painting. And if you saw the video, uh, which <laughs> ended up at night because I was so tired that Friday that I forgot to change uh, AM, PM to AM. So it aired at night. I apologize for that. But now it's up so you can go back and watch it anytime you want. But check it out. Uh, it's a sculpture. I did a demonstration sculpture at the galas before the pandemic and they and it was very successful. It sold for quite a bit. Someone really liked it. And um, it was in honor of What's Upper Doc. So that's what that one was about. And um, But I felt like if they asked for a painting, I should do a painting. So over the pandemic, I really practiced hard, worked hard on a lot of my paintings, starting with a self-portrait because I didn't want to offend anybody if it didn't turn out. And I knew I wouldn't offend myself. It was my first painting. But uh, maybe I'll give you a walkthrough of my painting growth and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, if you're interested in that, post in the comments and I'll share it with you. My paintings that I've donated to the Chuck Jones um, Center. Some people pretend that they are uh, kind of like Mozart was, where Mozart felt he could write whatever he wanted and people should love it instead of knowing their audience. So you'll find nudes or abstracts or things like this because Chuck Jones says, just send it. We, we, we would love for you to do the theme, which this theme this year is Martin the Martian, a very fun theme. But if you don't want to do the theme or you don't even want to do a Chuck Jones thing, you're welcome to submit anything you want. We just want you to do a good painting and and we'll put a price tag on it. And if somebody buys it, some people do wire sculptures. Some people do sculptures. There's a man I know who does really nice jewelry. Uh, so you can do just about anything as long as you're willing to donate it in full to the charity and the charity makes the money. So that's the way the red dot works. Google red dot. And uh, I can tell you. Here's my, it's red dot 13. How could I forget that number? Red dot 13. So you can Google red dot 13. And I think I have a picture. It's a red dot. And then it has it in, uh, well, no, it doesn't have it here. I thought maybe it had it in Roman numerals, but, um, but uh, yeah, just uh, Google that. And uh, if you're interested in donating a painting and we'll see you at the gala, what I will tell you is artists are invited to have a couple of tickets to the gala. So um, be sure to uh, reach out to them, tell them you want to do a painting, see if they have any canvases available, but uh, you put your, your, your signature on the back so that nobody knows what your pay, who your painting is by. Uh, they buy it because they like the painting, not because they want your signature for whatever reason. And uh, I have never gotten the red dot. I've done this for, uh, gosh, seven years, and I've never gotten a red dot. Well, I did for my sculptures. That's different. But for a painting, I've never gotten it. I, But my paintings seem to be hitting the mark better each year because they get put in for more money each year, and then they sell for more money each year, which means I'm getting closer to the mark of what people like to see over their couch, I guess. I don't just like to do the cartoon 
illustrations, you know, paint the colors and copy something, a frame from the uh, Chuck Jones um, cartoons. I like to kind of put my own spin on it because there's plenty of people who do that. So I, I, I know that part of the problem or the challenge can be with my red dot is that I'm going a, a direction, trying to find that sweet spot between just uh, putting a comic strip on a painting, which there's nothing wrong with that. It sells, it gets the charity what they want. So please don't think I'm dissing that. Okay. I'm just saying for me, I wanted to have it to be a little more, I, I like it to be a sense of difficulty. So I did a painting. Maybe I can find it right now that you can see last year, the one that they put uh, 25, um, hundred dollars on and it sold for four hundred and fifty dollars that is the most i've ever made on a painting okay uh the original red dots were 750 so i still am not in red dot territory as a painter but i just keep striving for the great red dot it's a fun thing to do right i mean it's just kind of fun to to strive for it here it is here's my painting and this is the bid uh, at the time it had, let me just zero in on it so you guys can see it. I'll hold it up. But there it is. It's not necessarily the best way to do it. I promise that when I'm back in my studio, you can see it because it's a little bit white centric here. The camera just cannot seem to, it's like, I'm having trouble zooming in on it. Let's see if it's back. No, it's just because it's on my phone and not real. But uh, what it is, is it's uh, Bugs Bunny as uh, Leopold which is one of my favorite. And uh, he's looking over some notes. So, uh, and notes is a play on words. So it's notes as in paper and notes on the note paper. Did anybody get it? Who, who notes? <laughs> I mean, who knows? So, uh, so that's kind of what it is. Uh, you can also just paint your style and share it. You don't have to do the theme. In fact, uh, I had epiphany in the middle of the night a couple of days ago, so my painting may change. I was going one direction, and now I'm getting ready to go a completely different direction because I feel that the dream told me, hey, this could be really good, so I want to do that. Uh, my husband has an idea, too, so he's going to sketch it out for me today, and we'll see which one I do, but I got to get it done because it was really due yesterday, but uh, I have just been very busy. I had another project I did. I made a puppet. Yay! Uh, that was really fun. Tight deadline, really super tight deadline. So I didn't really get to enjoy it like I usually do when I make puppets for people. Uh, but it was really fun and really great. So Red Dot Auction, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. But uh, if you want to do this, this is a great thing. And if you can make the gala great, the problem this year, I'm going to tell you right now as I lean in, um, I'm rolling back because I need to do something here that I should have done right away. Forgive me. Um, but I want to talk to you about my next subject, which is cachet art. But uh, before I do that, let me just finish with Red Dot. This year, Red Dot has made the gala, unfortunately, at the same time as the Disney Anna fan club event, which is they're the, both the same Saturday night. Can you believe this? wish I could make them change it. I wish I could ask Red Dot to push it back a week so that I could go to both. Uh, I really hate missing it. I don't miss Red Dot events. I love them so much. And um, I'm just heartbroken that I'm going to miss this one because I'm already, uh, uh, I've already been reserved by the Disney and Fan Club to be a part of their, their bit. So, but I'm, that doesn't make me stop doing a painting. I always paint for them. So the fact that I cannot go to the gala, I'll try to watch it online. Um, they do keep it on a little bit later so I can at least watch how good it was, but it breaks my heart that I can't go. So if you're involved with the Disney Anna fan club and you're an artist and you're coming for that May event, understand you are in conflict, but that doesn't mean you don't, you can't do a painting. Okay. You want to do a painting, reach out, Google it. If you have any questions, hit me up on messenger. Okay. All right. So this is my box for cachet. What is a cachet? So I'm going to dig in here. And I'm going to show you a cachet. Which cachet do I want to show you? I'm very particular about which cachet I'm going to show you. I'll show you, no, 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 and no. Not that one, not that one, not that one. I can show you, I don't even know if I have a past cachet, but I can show you 
my uh, prototype. That's what I'll do. I'll show you my prototype of a cachet that I did for uh, Walt Disney. But I need to have the actual... Let me see if I have an actual prototype that I sent the printer. I do not. Doggone it. Wah. I thought I did. Wah, wah, wah. You, 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 you need to be prepared, young lady. All right. Well, let me go a little bit further in here. Maybe I won't do that one. Eh. I'm getting upset with myself because I really should have been ready for you guys. I apologize. You know, this is usually edited out when it's not live. But I'll see what I can find in here for you. I think I'm just going to go on the back here with the Gregory Hines ones. Yeah, this will do. This isn't Disney, but then I told you we're going to do a lot of different stuff. It's not, they're not, they're not canceled. I need a canceled one so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. We'll do Charles Schultz. So last year, don't hurt, don't hurt it. La okay, so what is a cachet? Okay, what is a cachet? Well, first of all, what is a first day cover? Okay, as an artist, and a lot of the time on the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Cherry Harden, if you want to know more. A lot of the times on the Patreon page, um, <clears throat> I talk to artists about how they can get their name out in the world, how they can start to make a living doing what they love. How can they do it on a shoestring budget? How can I make this happen? Well, this is one of the ways you can make this happen. Do you remember last year there was a stamp that was issued? You may have seen them issued to celebrate uh, Charles Schultz and the Charlie Brown characters. Okay. You see the symbol up right here? You see that we have, uh, let me not pick her because you guys would have to tell me her name. Let's pick a popular lady. Let's pick up Lucy. Okay. So this is a first day cover. Take a good look at it. See what it is. It's a first day cover. Most first day uh, covers, what it means is that the stamp has been canceled on the day of issue. So this one came out September 30th, and it was in Santa Rosa. Why? Because those of you who are uh, aficionados of Charles uh, of Charles Schultz and of Snoopy, whom I love, Snoopy here dancing. Isn't that cute? Okay, so stamp collectors don't necessarily just collect stamps. Thank you, Michael Luzzi. Uh, they collect... Um, first day of issue covers. Now, this can be a postcard, an envelope, an object, as long as this can stick on it, okay? That makes it a collectible first day of issue envelope, okay? Are you following me? Now, this particular uh, set of stamps, there are 10, I believe. So, you've got the beautiful Lucy here, and you've got... Um, Line it. Uh, no, this is pig pen. I think this is pig pen. Yeah, this is pig pen. So there's pig pen. You see, is a stamp, and Snoopy is dancing. Now, if you look at this and you see something in common here, all right, you see that both are canceled with a black and white with Snoopy dancing. This is called the black and white cancellation. So this is a. Um, they have an official name for it. It is called the. First day cover cancellation stamp, meaning, okay, you get a special one if you happen to go to Santa Rosa at the gal at the little uh, event that they have. Many will migrate to the town and get their uh, envelopes canceled in person with a special stamp that's in that city. So these are not those, but these are the uh, uh, cancellations right here, black and white on the color stamp. Okay, so you've got that. Black and black and white digital digital cancellation in that envelope, and then there's also a color DCP, which is different from the black and white DCP. Um, and uh, I could show you that, but I'd have to dig again, so we will go with the black and white one. But this one is a color DCP, okay? Now, the cachet is usually done here. Now, in some cases, if your art is larger, 
than uh, this envelope. You can do a uh, office envelope, which is, you know, four by 10. You can illustrate on there. In fact, if you saw my Walt Disney uh, caches that I did with uh, train stamp, transcontinental stamp of 2009, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I, uh, to 2019, 20, 2020, 2020, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I did those and, uh, uh, they sold, I have a few left. Uh, I'd love to show you, but I should have pulled them out. Uh, I will extend that the next time and maybe we can see them, but, uh, but you, it's a art or illustration that is done here, which I will be doing. I haven't done them yet, but I wanted you to see a clean envelope. Okay. You can do anything there. You can put uh, a map and it shows Santa Rosa. You could do a, uh, uh, what else would you do? You put a little fur there for Snoopy. You can put Snoopy here and it's furry. Anything that's glued in this field is considered a first day cover cachet. It can be affixed to the envelope. It can be drawn on the envelope. There are many levels of cachets. They are printed, uh, a digital print uh, made from original art, or you can have hand drawn, hand painted hand colored uh, uh, caches. Those are the most expensive and the most time consuming. I will talk about that at another time. In any case, this is what it is. A cache is something in this field, big envelope on a postcard. You can actually, there is a, a wonderful, there are several cache artists that do very realistic art on them, depending on the stamps they choose. Uh, it's not just ones like this. It's all stamps have first day covers and first day cover cache artists pick their favorite. Many do ducks, many do uh, sports, many do uh, historians, Black History Month. You name it, there are caches out there for you to collect. Now, why as an artist would you do these? Because they're small little art pieces you can do and sell for a good price. So my Disney, my Walt Disney ones, which I don't have uh, many left, I sold most of them already. Um, and I won't get into that detail, but I will tell you that I sold many of those already. And let me show you the, the working print on them so you can see what I'm talking about. You may, you may have bought them. So let me just thumb through here and see if I can find them. Well, here's my dancing dinos for the dinosaur stamp. But I'd like to show you the transcontinental railroad one if I can. So here is the illustration of the one I did for the transcontinental railroad stamp. This is the working proof. The transcontinental railroad stamps, one went here, one went here. And one went here. So it was this train here in a stamp, this train here in the stamp. And it's about the two coming together with the golden spike. And it was 150 years anniversary and the golden spike was here. So then you decide what cancellation is going to go on these because you don't necessarily have to have the cancellation first. In this case, the art was first. I sent them to a special location as a cast a artist and had them canceled. If this has got your eyes spinning and sounding like a cat's cradle to you, hit me up and I can explain more slowly instead of making it part of Terry TV. I can actually, I probably will do a video that explains this more. This is a great window for artists to get themselves known, to get themselves collect collectible and become a historical, historical, historical piece of art. Okay. I do teach this. Uh, and uh, what's even better is I co-teach it, work with it, uh, with a wonderful man named Michael Luzzi. You may have heard of Michael Luzzi. If you haven't, you should. Uh, he really is very, very well known in the stamp industry, and he's the one that actually coached me in being a good cachet artist. So uh, this explain, but they are different kinds. Now this is a original artwork done on a digital device. I did this on my iPad. Then I had it printed up and I did a lot of issues of it. And here I did a color one and a black and white one. This is because the black and white digital cancellations go on this and the color one digital cancellations go on this. And if I can find an example, I do have my art proofs around here somewhere. I just couldn't dig them up at the last minute. I forgot. And forgive me, life has been very interesting. 
for me. So uh, I'm more together now than I was in the past, but uh, I'll share that with you if I can. And uh, let me see if I can show you. I don't know if I have it here. It doesn't look like it. So let's see. That's because I'm in the... Oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. So here is an example. Okay. So here is the color cancellation. You see how it's got that blue and red? You not, might not be able to see that because the camera. And here is the black and white cancellation. And then here is a classic cancellation. So that is the layout for this envelope. So that is where... Beep, beep. Beep. That's where you're going to go, each one of these stamps. Now, these are uh, uh, color representations of the stamps because uh, and you cannot actually put these on anything and sit because this is illegal to do this. This is just for layout purposes so that I know where my art needs to go and how it's going to look on both envelopes. Okay. So the set sells for the, the set of these I did. 300 limited edition of 275, 375, something like that. Can't remember. I'll let you know. And uh, a person can buy both the color and the black and white of Walt and Ward Gimble for forty dollars. So, uh, so, so that's the idea is to do some sets so people can have art at a good price. Now, I my first one was my first cover cachet. My first introduction to the cachet world as a cachet artist. It's called First Cachet. You actually write that on the envelope postcard or whatever you're doing. And people, there are people out there that just collect first cachet artists, first cachet, say that quickly. And um, uh, those are very expensive. So I did the Dragons of 2019 and in 2020, there was the the competition. That was my very, very first competition, 2020. Um, first cachet. I think they were 2019. Those those stamps were issued. And uh, I'll be sure and show you those when I get a minute. But uh, the first, uh, if you want more on this, just post in the comments if this is making your eyes cross and bores you. But many of you are artists out there, and you're always asking me, how can I start? Well, this is a great way to start. So... Uh, I hope you will consider it. It's a lot of fun. I'm just going to make sure I'm putting these back where they're supposed to be. I think, oops, that's not it. You see, so I have to be careful because I can put these in the wrong spot. And we don't want to do that. Okay, let me show you. These, I think, are the color. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No, these are still black and white as well. Let's see, DCP. Maybe I did all black and white ones. That doesn't sound like me, though. I like to do color and black and white of the pieces. In most cases, I got a new idea here. No, here are the color cachet. So here is the color digital. You see the difference? The color one has the whole Peanuts family on it. The other one just had Snoopy. So that is the color DCP, color digital cancellation. And Snoopy was the black and white one. So there you go. I usually sell both envelopes if they're printed for uh, $40. Uh, I, I will often sell, if I'm hand drawing and hand painting them, uh, they're a lot more expensive. So my dragons were all hand-drawn, hand-painted, 132 different drawings or something insane, all hand-drawn, hand-painted. Yeah, don't even ask. It almost put me in the hospital. But uh, that set, which is eight envelopes, sells for about 800 bucks. So I have a couple of sets left. I did, how many sets did I do? Uh, Michael could remind me, but I think I have eight full sets, something like eight full sets I did, or maybe there was 10 full sets. Anyway, I only have two or three left, but they're really beautiful. They were hand painted by me, drawn by me, and they sold uh, because they were my first cachet ever done. And they also, there's a contest for cachet artists. I hope you're listening. If you're someone who likes to draw, paint or whatever, you can come and talk to me. Any age, there's a contest that's coming up. Any age can enter and draw. They can draw on an envelope, a postcard. Uh, there is a guy who does these really beautiful uh, kind of kinetic 
art envelopes. Um, they unfold or they something moves on them or they're like a pop-up. You can do anything. I mean, guys, as long as that cancellation and those stamps are on there, it can be anything. And you might want to Google to see what people do. There, There's some that are just so, so clever and um, really affordably priced in some cases. In my case, I do limited editions because a lot of times I do hand-drawn, hand-painted. I did that crazy one. And uh, that's the one that sells for the most. And I only have two or three of those sets available. But uh, people buy them because they're super rare. I'll never do that many of those again. I knew I wouldn't. And uh, so, and most of the time I sell to people who like, uh, who, it's a theme. So trains go to people who like trains and so on and so forth. Because that's the person, that's the audience. Know your audience, right? So there you go. So there you go. There it is, Cache Art. Let me look at some of your comments. And uh, like that, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of what I've said today. And let's see what you say. Didn't get to finish my question because of your husband's expertise. Is it true that Mickey Mouse becomes public domain in the next couple of years? You need to ask David Skipper that, that question and Stephanie Fix that question. And who else? Leo Holzer, that question, Bob. I do not know the answer to that question. But I can almost tell you something about Disney. And remember I said I wasn't going to get political. I'm just going to dip a toe, tiny little toe. The incident that happened in Florida with Disney, um, Reedy Creek, that's all I'm going to say. All right. See how covered Disney was. And now think about their their main character. What do you think Disney has in mind? And would they ever allow that to happen? My question is no. <laughs> So uh, I think you're good with that. This is the thing about Disney. They they close a lot of gates and um, and uh, they they have a lot up their sleeve that they don't necessarily share till the time comes. That's what I'm going to say about that. So ask those people. Jo Bob Burdeen, the Steamboat Willie version will be public domain. No gloves, different shoes, hat, black and white. And then Joseph Yagavetic. Ask Joseph Yagavetic. Listen to that. Thank you, Joseph. That is so sweet of you. But again, not everyone shows all their cards right up front. So uh, you can be assured that uh, you're probably pretty doggone safe if you're Steamboat Willie or Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Joseph Yacoban, thank you. Yeah. Isn't it great that Joseph chimed in? I appreciate that. Hi, Deanna. Hi, hi, hi. So, so guys, not a lot of comments on this, I see. But uh, I appreciate it. Think about it. Watch this over again and see if you have questions and then post them in the comments. I have to say something here that you will either understand or not understand. I'm not on social media very much except for the times that I broadcast. So I don't necessarily see all your comments right away. So if you've been watching the pre-recorded ones, which I think are really special, I've gotten a lot of good feedback on that. Um, that, uh, that, and I may not answer you specifically, please don't be hurt. Don't think that I, I don't like you or care about you or appreciate your commenting. I respect your comments, but as much as I would like to answer you right away, I've got quite a bit going on here now with my elderly parents. And uh, I'm just going to touch on this very lightly. I've touched on it before a couple of times, but right now I'm just there. My dad is doing much better recovering very well, but um, there's a lot that is on me to make sure that their lives run smoothly as well as my own, which is insanely crazy. So if I don't get to you like in a few weeks or whatever, I, I will just vow that I will go back through and answer you. So if it feels like a glacial response, I want to apologize up front and say, uh, I'm thinking about you and I haven't forgotten you. It's just that when you, when I'd love to hear what you have to say, it's just that I've not been able to be as active on the social media circuit as I would like to. For one thing, I'm 65 years old and I'm not using that as an excuse. It's just everything is a learning experience for me because this is the part that is not art for me. Um, this is something that I really want to do and I really want to reach out because I know you're out there and I know there's someone out there that I need to meet that I really enjoy meeting and so I don't want to lose uh, the opportunity of you coming and commenting and uh, 
uh, telling me how you feel or asking me questions or whatever. But uh, I, I've i just been in, you know, life has hit pretty, uh, it's been a real cat's cradle time for me. And I know for many of you out there, I'm not by myself in this. Many of you have reached out to tell me you're challenged a bit too. So all I can tell you is just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And, uh, uh, and that's not just a cliche smarmy comment. It's for real. I think if you you quote from a movie that you love that can help you be upbeat, like in Ted Lasso, be the goldfish and try not to dwell on something too harshly and don't beat yourself up if you can't do everything. I have a, a, a system here where I list things that I have to do and I use paper. I don't know if I've ever shared this with you. I did share it with the tribe, but I have paper and this is my April already. That way, at a glance, I can see how seriously busy I am. And there's a few more things I need to write in here. So uh, when it gets too full, I then turn to post-it notes. And if I can check off three in this column here of all the things I need to do in the day, I'm doing good. All right. I try to do that so I can feel more uh, I can feel better about what I'm doing. OK. Oh, and there's another one here I can check off. That's what feels good is being able to check off something that you've done. Um, but uh, yeah, this is something and there's something that I've been trying to do for almost a full year. And I seem to just not be able to get it together because it is a lot of technical stuff I've got to do. And I really am someone who likes to be under hot lights and just uh, create it's the one place that I can be in my Zen zone as an artist and not have to check and double check and triple check what's going on in my life, which when you're in the real life, this tends to be what happens, right? So you get in your car and before and you start the engine, but before you put it in reverse to come out of your driveway, so to speak, you have to look behind. You not only check your rear view mirror and your side mirrors, but you also look behind you because the dog dog walker who's decided to, for whatever reason, look at a bird or a squirrel or whatever and stand behind your car with their dog. And then you've just checked your mirrors and then they walk into position and you don't look back. You could actually injure someone when you're driving. I always make sure I have a distance from another car. And I also have, I'm checking escape routes. I'm saying to myself, uh, if something should happen, can I go this way? Can I go that way? Um, watching my speed, not coming up too close to the car in front of me because if the car comes up too close to me, I have a place to go. I want to make sure that I am focused on the road, driving like I'm in a war zone because of people who've decided to use the freeway as a racetrack or to try and cut me off and cause me to have an accident that's not my fault, but because I ran into them, it could be my fault. We've heard about these people. Um, all of that is going through my head just to drive my car to the supermarket. And that is so much on you, isn't it? Isn't it a lot on you to just a drive that used to be fun and exciting doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily that anymore, you know? And when I go out into the world, if I meet people, I want to make sure that I'm careful, distance apart. Um, COVID is still out there. Oh my goodness. Back of my head. Yada, yada. You know what I mean? And uh, it's not the same life that we had before where we could be a little more lazy fair about stuff. I'd love to go back to that, but I know that for others sur to survive and me to survive that I've got to really think and process what's, what's happening and make sure that people are safe as much as I can help. Can't help every time. I mean, um, I was parked at a traffic stop, not like a traffic stop light, but a actual police stopped all the traffic on the five freeway. And I was in that crowd and a semi, a guy in a semi just decided he did not see me and bit my car. So I've been without my car for a couple of weeks as it's in the body shop. Upside of that is I met an amazing guy at the body shop uh, who is now a new friend. His name is Andrew. He has an amazing body shop and he loves speed racers. So what's not to love? So from ashes comes great things, but it's still rough and painful. 
I lost a very dear friend of mine, Steve Mutz, and it happened too suddenly for me. And I have to change my calendar because it's important to me to be at his celebration of life. So uh, things are going to come across your bow as you're trying to sail your strip, your ship in a straight line and trying to worry about all this stuff. But I think this is why people are a little like a little tense. So if that's you, um, take a moment to go out and see the beautiful day or to do something that you love, whether it's gardening or taking a walk or painting or sketching or watching, binge watching that favorite show of your, whatever it is, don't apologize for it. Indulge in it so that you can be that whole person. Cause I can tell you from experience, not being in my art studio for over nine months is affecting the type of person I am. Art is in my DNA. And that sparkly girl that goes and speaks to you at elementary schools, at schools, at, uh, uh, events and things isn't as sparkly as she could be and i start to feel her coming back as i start to reconnect with all of you so i want to thank you for being here today i want to thank you for taking the time to watch and taking the time to comment and taking the time let me know what you'd like to hear about terry tv is about talking about all kinds of stuff but I, we, I've been told by many people we tend to get Disney centric, and I want you to introduce something new to me. I love to learn, so if you have something that you are passionate about, come and come and share it with us. Okay, get on the Patreon page and share it there. Five dollars a month, you know. That's why I keep it at that rate because I want everybody to call. You know, free is here, and what they do there helps me do this here. But it's a very different dynamic there. And it's really a lovely warm one. So if it's something you'd like to do, patreon.com slash Terry Harden, or just go to Patreon and put my name in there and you'll find me and join, join for a month. Um, I do monthly because I don't want you to be locked into yearly. I could do yearly, but uh, I'd rather do monthly. And then later, if you say, you know, I like this so much, could I pay for the year? I might be able to work something out. I don't know. Again, one of the things I love about Patreon is they take care of all that stuff and I just can create, which I love. So uh, thank you so much. And I hope you have a lovely week. Let's see what we've got here. I am witness to Terry's big heart. Bob is part of the tribe. He's, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. Um, she shares it with all her fans and friends. When you become a patron on her page, it's so helpful. As Terry says, dip a toe in. And, and Bob and Rose are uh, philanthropists. Did I say that right? They have been the head of many charities. So, and many organizations, they organized a lot and they retired for a while and people just couldn't have it. So they've been begging them to come back. But I have the blessing of having them in the tribe because when I want to do something for a charity, I ask them, you know, how can we do it? You know, and uh, uh, they have been very helpful. I've been to several of their events and it's always been wonderful. Met some great, talented people because that's what happens. You donate your art. You may be someone who's an artist just can't seem to get ground and get things moving forward. Here's a great way to do it uh, is start to donate to charity events and meet some of the people who are givers. You never know who you're going to meet in those arenas. And uh, they're always a blessing and a benefit in one way or another, even if it's just to love your art and make you give you the confidence to move forward and keep trying, you know, keep, keep going, you know. Don't let that voice in your head stop you from doing what you want to do. All right. That's the 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 essence of Terry TV. Okay. No matter what it is. Uh, hello, friends, says Angie Floyd. I'm so late. Darn work gets in the middle of my social life. She's she's all about this. Angie is absolutely right. Uh, there's many of you who kind of feel that way. I'd love to tune in, which is why I have this channel as well. Angie, great to see you. And Joe Penny. Hi, Terry. Had fun with your video that posted on Saturday morning at 1230. I know. I know. I was so tired, Joe, that I forgot to put AM instead of PM. And then I tried to change it. And StreamYard said, uh-uh, tough tacos. And my husband said, well, you got to roll with the punches, you know? So I did. But thank you for watching it. I appreciate it. Uh, I was a drinking change of pace. Yeah, it was because Terry was doing it half asleep. You know, I I visited both of my parents on Friday. And my dad is in one convalescent hospital. My mother's in another. And uh, I had so much fun with my father. My husband saw me start to 
get so tired I could barely stand because the room is so small where my dad is in that there are no there's no place to put a chair. And so uh, I couldn't even take a moment to get off my feet. So I stood the whole time visiting with my dad and I stayed extra long because he was full of energy and I hadn't seen him that way in such a long time that I really enjoyed staying and, and chatting with him. And I had gone to see my mother just before that so that I could report to my father how she is doing. So uh, it was a long day for me on Friday a very emotional day on me on Friday. So my husband said he watched me just all of a sudden look like I might not be able to stand for much longer. So he gently interrupted and told my father that we had to go. And I told my dad, I will come and see him tomorrow. Mondays are just too volatile for me to be able to come um, on Mondays. It, it, it's just too challenging. When I promise it on my parents, I tend to... Um, I tend to uh, disappoint them. So I don't like to do that. So instead I simply um, say Tuesday, I'll do it. And I, I learned a bunch of other stuff. I learned a lot of, um, um, I just know that Mondays and Fridays are my busy days. Sometimes Fridays are okay, but Mondays are just the day, uh, the start of the week, and I never know what's going to come across the bow. So that being said, thank you. I love you. Thank you for saying that. And uh, thank you for mentioning that, Joe. I appreciate it. A testament to Terry's heart, says Bob, as she has appeared in several events that we have organized. Very generous with her talents. Thank you, Terry. And thank you, guys. So that's the deal. Uh, Disney and a fan club has an amazing event. If you are someone who loves Disney legends or the induction of Disney legends, um, then check out the Disney and a fan club, Disney and a, uh, fan club dot O R G or here. If you are in the Facebook area, just, uh, put them in the search of your Facebook if you're on Facebook, they have a Facebook page. Check them out. Check it out. Uh, the Expo on Sunday, where you get to meet a lot of these people, including myself, as we sell our wares and speak with you, a purchase does not mean, you know, a purchase does not constitute a conversation. So you do not have to buy something to talk with me. You can come and chat with me. I will. I always tell people to come back when they're bored. Okay. So uh, feel free to come and see me there. Saturday night, there is an amazing dinner involving people like Mindy and uh, Mindy Johnson and uh, uh, Floyd Norman is going to be there. Bob Garo is going to be there. Uh, if you love the art of Kevin and Jody, they will be there too. Uh, who else is going to be there? Uh, our own um, uh, Connie Lane, who was the ambassador to Walt in the 1966, I think, if I got that wrong, correct me, guys. Do it now. Save me. Save me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a lot of great people, not too expensive to be at this dinner. There will be a silent auction. They will do signings. I was the guest of honor last May. This is their turn. How fun to come and see how many people you can recognize. So the Disney Anna Fan Club event is in May. Go to DisneyAnnaFanClub.org or DisneyAnna. Uh, Google Disney Anna fan club on the Facebook page. Okay. I would have posted it, but again, technology and me tend to be a bit challenging. So forgive me, but I'm here for you. One of the best things I do, as you can see is talk. So <laughs> it's not like I wake up going, Oh my gosh, I'm talking. Uh, that is not, that is not me. Oh yes. And Bob is helping with Margaret Carey and Jane. As you, do you say that bear? Um, I'm dying to see meet Jane. I've never met Jane, but Margaret's an old friend and I'm always excited to meet Margaret Carey, the original Tinkerbell. So guys, my point is come check it out. You might surprise yourself how much fun you're going to have at the Disney Anna fan club or the Red Dot Society auction as an artist. Think about it. Now, for those of you who are artists who have things you might want to sell or you have a Disney collection you want to sell, you're out of luck this time because all the tables are full. But go and check it out and then meet with the organizer of the Disney Anna Fan Club so you can get your name in and you can get a table next time. They have an October event that's happening. So it's not too far. That'll allow you to kind of plan your presentation and everything and see what stuff sells 
for. Talk to some of the vendors as you sell your collection. This is a great place to sell your collection to collectors or a collection that somebody had that passed and you're not sure because you are the proud recipient of all this stuff and you don't want to do a garage sale and get taken. You want to give it to people who are going to appreciate it and give you the prices that you deserve. So that being said, do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for being who you are and mwah, be well, be safe. Talk soon. Bye for now. I say, I say, bye for now. Thank you for watching Terry TV.